Welcome to the Gym Breakthrough Podcast. This show is about one thing and one thing only, turning your gym into a thriving business you love to own. So if you want to know what it really takes to grow your membership, make more money, and build a rock-solid community of raving fans, you've come to the right place. All this information is 100% free, so please subscribe to and review our podcast. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Gym Breakthrough Podcast. I am Marcus Gerzi, and today... We're gonna be talking about social media and helping you determine whether you are doing it right and actually adding value to your gym's marketing efforts or if you are doing it wrong and just creating more noise for your existing and or your potential members to sift through in their feeds. Um, Thank you guys for being patient these last couple weeks. I took the last couple weeks off, uh, at least from doing the podcast, to spend some time with family over the holiday. I hope you guys all had a great holiday. Welcome to 2020. It's a new year. It's a new decade. So I'm excited to get into this stuff with you because social media is a topic we probably get asked on the most, or at least marketing and, and how to leverage social media and do it correctly. So I'm excited to get into it. Um, Before we get into all of that, I want to talk to you guys about something important. For those of you who are looking to make a serious change in your business in 2020, um, I sent out an email a few few days ago um, that I actually didn't plan on writing, but just kind of happened because it was on my heart. And um, I want to share that with you guys here today because I got a lot of really good questions from it. So uh, I'm just going to read this to you here, guys, um, And the, because some of you aren't maybe on the email list if you're following the podcast, so I figured I'd go over it with you. But here's the gist, guys. 2020 is officially now upon us, and like the rest of us, you're probably super psyched about the year to come and all the opportunity it represents in making this the best year yet. It's a clean slate to do it all better. It's a chance to finally break through with your business and take your life to the next level. But Regardless how badly you might want it, odds are is that you may not be set up for success. The unfortunate reality is that most gym owners are doing it wrong. Not the training part, not the caring about their members part, the business part. Now, obviously, this isn't on purpose. That would be insane, but it's wrong nonetheless. So you see, it's like this. They, you're simply playing the wrong game. It's like trying to win a game of chess while playing with a checkers strategy, right? It simply doesn't work. The games may look really similar. The boards could be the same board, but they're two very different games with two completely different strategies required to win. The problem is is that most gym owners don't know that they are playing by the wrong rules, which is why it feels like they're banging their head against the wall. Um, And that's also why so many burn out and ultimately give up. We lose way too many valuable gym owners every single year because of exactly this. And 2020 will be no exception. People who could be making a significant impact in their communities for years to come, creating meaningful careers for the next generation of fitness professionals and actually loving what they do for a living that could have not only stayed in business, but could have thrived in their business had they just figured it out sooner. So now what? Well, for one thing, Going into this next year decade with the same old game plan of I'm just going to keep working my tail off and hope that it works out eventually simply isn't going to work. You deserve better. So does your team and so does your community. Grinding it out may have been what it took to get you off the ground and even to where you are now, but it will not get you to your goals, right? There's a difference between startup mode and scaling your business. And most people never get out of that startup mode. And Ultimately, what that tends to do is not only not get you to your goals, but usually ends up leading to burnout because it is just a wildly inefficient way to build the business. And again, if you're playing by the wrong rules, you can't really win unless you get lucky. So that is not only unacceptable to happen because, we, again, we lose way too many good people because of that in this business, but it's also where we come in. We get to wake up every single day with the privilege to help the motivated gym owners of the world get their businesses right so that they can finally start making a great living, doing what they love, and continue to make this world a healthier place through health and fitness. So tell me if this sounds like you. You take excellent care of your members, yet you seem to lose about as many as you gain each month. You work your tail off every single day, yet feel like you are treading water and are barely able to make a living. You've listened to all the podcasts and read all the blog posts, yet you struggle to find what really works for you in your business, in your market. And you are ready to finally stop struggling and make 2020 your best year in business yet. If that is the case, then I encourage you to consider joining our new Gym Breakthrough program. Over the course of these next few months, my team and I are gonna be taking a small group of people 
through step by step to help you get crystal clear on exactly who you are and how to stand out in your marketplace, show you how to manage your time and priorities like a pro, which will help you get more done with a better outcome with less stress. I know that sounds insane, but trust me, you can check out the testimonials to the program. It works. This is one of the things we do best. And then once we get those fundamentals in place, we're going to help you redesign your entire sales marketing, retention, and retail systems to actually match your specific goals so that you can finally turn your gym into a thriving business like you've known it always could be. There's no gimmicks or ridiculous ad campaigns or six-week challenges required here, guys. Just the willingness to be coachable and to do the work. We only have a handful of spots left in this first round of Motivated Gym Owners for the January 2020 group. So if you are interested in learning more and really taking this thing to the next level, um, and making 2020 your best year yet that I encourage you go visit gymbreakthrough.com slash apply, um, fill out the quick application, schedule your time, and we will jump on a call and we'll chat about your business, see where you are, where you want to go and see if this could be a good fit for you. Um, availability is limited as there is only one of me. And I did this, did send this out to our list of almost 8,000 gym owners. So my slots have already filled up pretty quickly, but if you're catching this now, still follow the link, see if you can find a time slot that works for you and uh, we'll take it from there. Anyway, um, real quick warning, if you are just looking for shortcuts or band-aids, please do not reach out and because this program is not gonna be for you. This program is not for those who, this program is for those who are serious and wanna build a business that is, it's an amazing gym business that you're gonna actually make a meaningful impact with. You're gonna create real jobs for your team and a business that stands the test of time. This is not a churn and burn. Just put money in your bank account regardless of what's gonna happen to your business or your team or your community in six or 12 months. This is the longevity plan. So if you wanna do this for a career and you're tired of struggling, reach out. Let's have a conversation. I promise you it'll be the most valuable 45 minutes you spend on your business all month. Um, cheers to making 2020 the best year yet. And hopefully you finally break through and start earning a great living doing what you love. That's it. Okay. So let's get into the show for today. Um, what we're talking about here, guys, is social media. And the problem right now is that there is so much noise online in all of our feeds, and it is becoming increasingly difficult to stand out to both your existing and potential members. Um, for those of you who are savvy to how social media works, you know there are algorithms that determine your, um, your, your relevancy score, which means how many people actually see your stuff, right? So if someone likes your page, you know, what percentage of those people will see it? And your relevancy score, which is bas basically how well you do on social media, determines that. So if you put up posts that get very little engagement, and or you post very infrequently, your relevancy score probably kind of sucks. And that means what you do post gets next to no visibility. I'm talking low single digit percentage of the people who like or follow your page are gonna actually see it. So let's say you have a thousand people who like your page. You may only have 10 people who even see the post. I know that seems insane, but that's the reality. Versus when you do a good job with your social media and you are putting out content that people actually care about and engage with, then you are gonna have a much higher relevancy score, which means a larger percentage will see it, which is a snowball effect, right? So you can, I wanted to start by just explaining that little nugget for you guys there. So uh, now that we understand that, the other challenge here is that there is a lot of conflicting information about what you're supposed to do with social media. There are a lot of templates and people saying this or that. What we do here, which in Breakthrough is I'm here to give you transformation, not information. I am not trying to just give you busy work to say, hey, you're do look, you're doing social media now. I wanna actually show you things that work. And so I'm gonna talk about some of that stuff here today. But um, yeah, that's the gist of this. So let's get into this thing here. So the game is changing quite a bit right now, guys. The All the social media platforms are making a lot of adjustments very quickly, especially right now, uh, particularly on Facebook. There is a huge emphasis going towards groups. In case you haven't noticed, there's even TV commercials from Facebook promoting groups. Um, so there's going to be a lot of opportunity with that coming up here soon. A lot of which we're actually working with our clients on how to implement that and leverage that to their advantage. There's some really huge opportunities with that as far as growth is concerned on the front end. Uh, we'll save that for the clients. Uh, but ultimately, fewer and fewer people are seeing your posts. And if they are not connecting with them, you're going to get lost in the shuffle. Um, the other challenge that I'm seeing here is that everyone seems to just be copying everyone else 
and straight up ripping people off. Um, and just like, oh, look, that gym in my market or someone that I like, this is working for them. And they straight up copy and paste it. And not that I'm not saying that you can't borrow from people and, and repurpose that and make it your own. Guys, that is what entrepreneurship is all about. It's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about taking what's already been proven to work and making it your own to make it work for you. But that little last bit about making it your own is the key step a lot of people are skipping. And it is incredibly frustrating because what that does is it lowers the potency of that, that the effectiveness of that campaign. Plus, you're not really doing anything for yourself. It's not gonna work the same for you because you are not that other person who created that and it has their tone and it's speaking to their ideal clients. And we'll get into some of that stuff here today about what to consider. Um, but stop copying what other people are doing. Take it as inspiration, but don't one for one it. Um, you know, the whole intention of social media is ultimately you want your members to feel like they are a part of something cool, interesting, important, etc. And by doing that well, you are going to inherently appeal to other people like them, and it's gonna help you generate traffic from this that is gonna generate leads and actually help you grow, right? So we gotta remember, there are two stakeholders we gotta consider here. It's both your members and your potential members that we are trying to communicate with and, and provide value to. This is not just a tool for potential members. This very much is a tool for your existing member base to feel like they're a part of something that matters. So keep that in mind here as well. All right. So first thing I want to talk about is just quality, right? So a lot of people kind of just check the box when it comes to social media. They know, hey, I'm supposed to post something every day or whatever their, whatever advice they're following. Um, not that that's bad advice, but and you do want to be posting very consistently. But guys, if it's not a quality post, it's not going to do anything aside from probably tell the your tell your audience that this is going to be a lot of just fluff content so you can kind of tune us out which is the exact opposite of what we want we want meaningful content that engages people so make sure that what you're doing is is quality and so what that means is put some thought and energy into the creative right into the writing into the imagery or the video that you're doing this is not something that we're just phoning in anymore, guys. Social media is no longer something that, hey, every business just needs to have a Facebook page and just post something every day. The, the stakes have raised. And so if you want your social media to actually add value to your business and not take away from it, we want to make sure we're doing something meaningful. So what does that look like? What, it, what does a quality post look like? Well, for one, we got to consider we got to be specific about who we're talking to. Again, you got to remember, we have our existing members that we're trying to serve as well as potential members. So a simple exercise for this, guys, is to take your brand heroes, which are your ideal clients, and look at them through two different lenses, right? So I'm going to say, if I'm creating content, and I'm going to say, okay, who's on the other end of this camera? I'm going to take, let's say, my top best four brand heroes, my people I wish I could just hit clone on. Man, if I could just have these four people make up my entire membership, I'd be in heaven, right? So take those four people and now say, okay, I'm going to imagine those four people before they were members. And I'm also going to imagine those four people right now. And I'm going to put those eight people in a room together. And that's who I'm speaking to. Just like how, when you do any sort of public speaking engagement, you need to know your audience. You need to know who is it that I'm presenting this to so that I can, you know, get my jokes right and my examples right and just make everything resonate with them as much as possible. Otherwise, it doesn't mean anything to them, right? It's just going to be generalized information. The more specific you can make it for them, the more effective it's going to be. So we want to start with identifying who it is that we're even talking to. So know who your ideal clients are and create the set of both before they were members and now. So now you have your audience down. The next piece is to say, okay, what is the problem or problems that I'm uniquely solving for these people? So again, this is something that we do in our program for our clients is help them establish what their biggest problems are that they uniquely solve better than anybody else and how to communicate that. But really give this some thought. You know, what is the one or two or three things for those brand heroes? And you can even say, if I have four brand heroes, let's take those four problems that I have solved or the two problems I've solved with those people. And let's make sure that what we are talking about in our content regularly addresses solving that problem from a variety of different angles. So it can be directly solving the issue of insecurity or you know struggling um, with workouts that are that are boring or classes that are too full or whatever those things are, and hitting them from all different angles from people for people through your content. Um, 
And so now we know who we're talking to. We are solving a problem with our content. The other piece here, guys, is again, kind of back to what I said a moment ago about not copying people. Make sure it's unique. Right? A lot of people try to create this very overly professionalized uh, version of themselves when they're creating content because you know, you're trying to represent yourself well and I get it. You definitely wanna show up like a professional, but that doesn't mean you should now restrict your personality because ultimately guys, this is a relationship-based service business. And if you ask your members, you know, why do you train here? Why do you stick around here? A lot of them are gonna say because of the coaching and the relationships, the community aspect of it. And that's because they get to see you and engage with you and your staff, which make them feel seen, make them feel important, safe, taken care of, in good hands, and fun, right? We, we talk all the time about making this the best hour of their day when we run a class, right? So we wanna make sure that that personality is coming through in our content. So making sure that you're not just over-professionalizing this and making it too tight. Make it sound and feel like you. What do you feel like when you interact with people inside your gym, whether it's with classes or maybe in your newsletters or when you're doing a, an initial sales consult? Use that feeling, that experience, that voice should be coming across in your content. And a great way to do that, guys, is using things like Facebook Live. I mean, I'm doing this this uh, this content live to you guys right now for the same reason, right? When you create content that's live, you are gonna show up a lot more you. And the more you you can be, the more you're gonna attract people that like you, people who feel like you're, you know, he's kind of cool, he's kind of funny or whatever, whatever it is about you that makes you unique, you know, is gonna come through. And that helps make your brand human. Okay, it's not just about creating content and being this robot and this machine and metrics and all that. Yeah, that stuff matters. But look, at the end of the day, this is an incredibly powerful tool for helping people feel like your brand has a personality and is something very human relative to what everyone else is doing, which is the stiff robot crap. So really take some, take some time here to think about what you can do to help that personality come across. And honestly, the more real and raw it is, and it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, yes, you want, you know, check your grammar, check your spelling, make sure your images aren't terrible. Um, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, for example, a live. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It just needs to be real, have good energy, and be authentic, right? And have a good message. So uh, leverage tools like Facebook Live and Instagram Live and all that to help add that human uh, factor to what you're doing. It really helps people connect. And by the way, this is also a great way to help people who are engaging with your pages to, again, like feel like they get to know you, which moves them forward in the buyer's journey and makes them more likely to reach out and or actually show up for the intro and so on. Because you're gonna start hearing things like, hey, I've been following your content for a while and I, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm talking to you for the first time, but I, I feel like I know you already. That is when you are doing it right. That is you running an effective content strategy on the front end. Okay, um, next piece here, consistency. Guys, I cannot emphasize this the, uh, enough, but look, you just showing up once in a blue moon and doing a post randomly is not an effective strategy. We wanna be consistent. Try to do something every single day. And I know that may seem like a huge undertaking, but guys, your marketing and sales should be at the very top of your priority list of what you do every day. And spending 30 to 45 minutes or maybe even a whole hour on some sort of content every day is going to have massive ROI for you. Again, with existing members and potential members. This helps with retention and engagement when people feel like you're creating content that still serves them. Right? And so I'm talking about both public facing content and content in your private groups. This is, you should be doing this stuff every day, guys. So make sure you're consistently creating that quality content. Um, the next piece here, um, you know, people ask all the time, well, what, that's a lot of content to create. What the hell am I supposed to be posting about? Well, for one, guys, you guys are creating magic in your gym every single day with your classes. You have moments happening in the mornings, midday, afternoons, evenings, whether that's a PR or, you know, just a class that's got some really good energy or, hey, it was, you know, hip hop Fridays today and this set was awesome. Check out this class is rocking it. Um, or look who's back from vacation. I mean, there are so many little moments that happen throughout your day that you can use to flesh out your stories and your content 
to give the to to have that real day to day content. So that's the first layer of content we teach is just real organic day to day stuff that's happening. That should you should be doing two to three of those things a day, and that can be stories. It can be in your private group. It should be on your public page. You you want to be creating that organic day to day stuff every single day. The next layer above that. Now is creating a brand narrative. This is where we get back to the problem that you solve. You should be thinking about, well, what are all the things that I am trying to accomplish with my content strategy? Well, maybe it's, I want to promote my primary program. I want to promote my premium program, which whatever, nutrition or whatever it is. I want to highlight my members. I want to showcase products. I want to promote events we've done or events that are coming up. Give yourself a basic framework to work off of. I like to assign a different topic, a different theme to each day for something like this. And that makes it a lot easier to say, okay, today I'm going to talk about the primary program and maybe the problem that we solve, or it'll be some social proof or things to that nature that are going to create a content strategy on top of the organic day to day stuff where there's some intention. And this is the kind of thing I encourage our clients to schedule in advance, do this in a single block once a week so you can crank out an entire week's worth of content at once, schedule it out. That way you know your branded stuff is happening with intention, with where you're specifically hitting on these key focal points within your business. And then you can just show up and do your day to day stuff organically throughout the week. This creates a much more dynamic and interesting social media stream that covers all of your bases. Um, let me see here. And oh, okay. And then, and lastly, you know, now that you have like a general framework of what and who and, and why and all that, you know, I want to point out something that it seems to be this huge surprise every time we have this discussion with clients, but it's a really important one to understand. And that is when you are running ads, so paid ads, so let's say Facebook ads, and you are doing it on the back of a weak or non-existent social media strategy, it is going to be infinitely less expensive, or excuse me, less effective and more expensive for you to achieve a decent result than if you have a solid organic content strategy already firing on all cylinders, and then you crank up ads on top of that. Because look, Advertising should be a force multiplier on the back of a healthy organic strategy. That is how you get a good ROI. Now, I'm not getting into the weeds on, you know, cost per click and ad campaigns and all that. I'm just saying generally speaking here, guys, if you want your ads to be a lot more effective, both in how they perform and how financially, how much they cost you, so getting your cost down, having a really good organic strategy where people are engaging and it's meaningful and you are you are speaking to a specific type of person in with intention in your content those ads are going to perform a lot better so if you are someone who is looking for the shortcut of you know hey i don't want to do the the day-to-day -day stuff i just want to go straight to the ads hey do your thing but just know it's going to be a lot more expensive and you're going to have cold ice cold traffic that when they go to validate who you are by checking out your other posts and what you're doing, and they have very little or nothing to work with, that it's gonna be a lot harder to get those people to take the leap on not only converting to whatever your, your offer was, but then actually getting them to show up and or sign up for the right reason, right? You don't want them to be doing this all off of, you had the cheapest price, it's the best deal. That's a bad spot to be in. You're a commodity and you're just like everybody else. We wanna have a meaningful story that's connecting with people on a more visceral, real level. You feel human, you've got a personality, you've got humor, you make little mistakes in your content, who cares? It's that you are creating something meaningful and that people check that when people respond to an ad, one of the most common things we see is that people, before they follow through, will take a look at your page and or your website and kind of validate, is, does this BS, is this BS or is this really something cool? And if you have something really strong there for them to feel like, oh wow, this looks like it's off the chain, this gym is firing, look at all these, look at all these reviews, look at all this engagement, they've got a lot happening. It completely changes the frame through which they look at you. So. If you're doing advertising, I just wanted to add that in here at the end. So anyway, guys, um, just wanted to put this out there because it is the new year. We have so much opportunity happening right now. 
um, specifically with social media. We want that relevancy score as high as possible. We want to be engaging. We want to be creating meaningful content. So I hope this was helpful for you and helps get you pointed in the right direction. I know there's a million rabbit holes we can go down with this stuff, but I was trying to give you guys something to give you a good framework to start the new year off right. So anyway, um, I want to thank all of you for joining me today. And again, if you're interested in learning how we can help you help your gym break through and make this the best year yet, reach out gymbreakthrough.com slash apply, or you can just go to gymbreakthrough.com. It's all there anyway. And uh, during the call, we'll get to know each other, learn about your business and see how we might be able to help you. Um, other than that, uh, I hopefully look forward to speaking with you soon and I will see you on our next episode. We'll see you then. Bye guys.